All right, so we are live in Facebook. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we are so excited to be here tonight in the Matchbook Pixers Facebook page because tonight, Ryan Barrett and I are going to be talking all about the new feature film, Open Your Eyes. So I'm just going to get things set up. Oh, perfect. I am muted on that end. So good. I just want to make sure everything is all set for us uh, while we are going live here. Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking about Open Your Eyes, the new feature film that is coming out on video on demand, DVD and Blu-ray on June the 1st. We are tracking super close. Um, I was just saying, Ryan, we're about T minus 14 days or 13 days because we're almost tracking towards the end of the day here. Uh, so that's super exciting. And this is something you are not going to want to miss out on. Um, so I see we have some folks that are jumping on the live. So I'm just going to go through a couple of things here um, and introduce myself. And I'm assuming most of you already know Ryan, but I am going to give him a bio tonight uh, and share a little bit of his background because if you are thinking about some questions tonight and you want to ask those, make sure you pop those in the chat because I will be monitoring those uh, and we'll have a chance to cover everything that's on your mind here tonight. Uh, so I'm Sarah Jansel. Uh, I'm going to be your host this evening on behalf of Matchbox Pictures. Uh, so welcome, welcome if you're just joining or on here. Uh, and joining me is the lovely Ryan Barrett. Uh, and for those of you that don't know Ryan, uh, so he is a Canadian actor, yay, uh, a Guelph native, so not too far from me in the old L town of London, Ontario, uh, and also Toronto-based uh, with a lot of his acting. Uh, so Ryan began his career in 2004 uh, with a Lionsgate horror comedy release called Desperate Souls, uh, and certainly continued the steady incline of intriguing roles, including genre festival favorite If a Tree Falls, which you also wrote and produced, which is is really exciting. Um, Ryan received a Best Actor Toronto International Film and Video Award for his follow-up world in Never Lost. And this blows me away, Ryan, but you lost 50 pounds to better suit the character. So you have obviously become known for your dedication to physical transformation in your roles, and this will be none other than one of those. Um, Ryan has never shied away from playing a leading man as well as a character-centric supporting role. And he has written, directed, and produced music videos as well, uh, feature length and short films, um, as well as creating fight choreography. This is so exciting <laughs> for the award winning film, The Demolisher. Uh, and most recently, we don't want to miss out on this. Um, aside from Open Your Eyes, Ryan also starred in Still the Water, which is a recent film that was just released in April as well. So welcome, Ryan. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's uh, yeah, excited to do this. Awesome. Me too. Me too. All right. So we've got more folks jumping on here. This is great. Uh, I love that you guys are joining us here live. Uh, so welcome, welcome if you are just jumping on. Um, again, you guys are what make this so awesome. We love you guys being a great audience. So if you've got those questions, feel free to pop those in the chat uh, and follow along with us because I've got some questions here for, for Ryan as well. Um, before we get started, I also want to share some awesome news. Uh, if you are somebody who is ready to jump in on the action here with this new amazing film coming out, um, then know that you will be able to pre-order this film, Open Your Eyes, on iTunes uh, shortly. So there's going to be a link and some communications coming out to let you know in a few days. Uh, when that's all ready to go. And know that if you are someone who does pre-order the film, there are some perks. Um, you will get a director and Ryan Barrett audio commentary and a gag reel sent to you, which is super exciting. So like I said, more information in a couple of days will be sent out. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled in the group here for that. <laughs> All right, so Ryan, we're going to get started. Um, you feeling ready? <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Let's, awesome. Let's get, uh, let's get into it. Get into it. Okay. Um, so this film was written, directed, produced, edited. We've got Greg Sager and Gary Elmer and a lovely but also smaller cast and crew uh, that put this together, uh, produced it, uh, filmed it in the midst of the pandemic in 2020 last year, which is absolutely incredible. Um, and so uh, for all of you working through all of the challenges and things, I can't wait to kind of pump into some of that stuff and, and how you felt there. Um, but before we get into some of the nitty gritty, 
Uh, I'd love to sort of start some things out uh, and just really get your take um, on what folks can expect with the film. So, you know, Ryan, from your perspective, uh, I'd love for you to share uh, with the audience here what we can expect from Open Your Eyes, maybe a little detail that you can share uh, on what we can expect this film to be about. Uh, yeah, so so it is, it is a tricky film. Um, to fully get into just describing the plot and everything because it, it is a very twisty um, supernatural or psychological thriller um, kind of in the vein of if you like films like The Shining, um, The Dark Half, those, there's some uh, big Stephen King titles right there anywhere that it kind of falls in line, uh, some similarities there. But yeah, it, it's basically a um, psychological thriller about a, a screenwriter who is uh, trying to deal with a past trauma, which he's basically just trying to push, push aside and um, complete a, a job that he's, that he's been commissioned to write. And while he's doing this, a bunch of strange things start happening in his apartment and all around him. And you kind of don't really know as a viewer if it's, if it's him or if it's his uh, other residents in the building or if it's something supernatural or who knows. But that's the that's the basic premise of it and and the kind of tone what you're getting into. Yeah, awesome. And I should also mention to folks that are tuning in here that uh, we are going to get a little slice of that tonight because we have two amazing things coming up. We have the movie trailer. So if you had, did not catch that last week uh, when we were chatting with Joanna online, we are going to be sharing that here tonight. Uh, lots of little tidbits that Ryan shared that were in there. And we also have an exclusive clip that I'm very excited to check out as well. So <laughs> Uh, so stay tuned. You don't want to, you don't want to hang up yet. Cause we've got a lot of things going on tonight that are going to be super fun. So, um, so right. I'm curious, this is a pretty cool project. I mean, not sure if there's any fight choreography in here or not, <laughs> but from your perspective, um, you know, I'd love to know if there's anything like specific, you know, obviously it's a really interesting role and it sounds like there's lots of potential twists and turns, but what really drew you to this film? Um, well, just, uh, I, I mean, I'd worked with, with Greg and Gary uh, previously on Kingdom Come and there, it was a really fun experience and just really got to fully immerse ourselves in that because of the locations we, we shot at. We shot in this old um, abandoned uh, mental health, uh, basically an asylum and this massive place that was shut down for that. So it was a, it was a really huge sprawling set and, and a shoot in general. So it was cool to kind of, come from doing that with them and then go to something completely different with this um, being uh, very isolated in, in more ways than one. We were obviously shooting in the middle of the lockdown and there was only a, a total of, I think five or six of us ever on set and our actual, our sound guy, uh, Steve Scott, he was actually outside in a van re recording from or mixing from the van and, and watching levels and everything. He'd come in to set up uh, boom mics and stuff like that. But, yeah, um, dealing with just a small handful of people and and one main location. It was it was Greg's uh, apartment and the apartment building, um, some other interiors there. But it was, yeah, it, re it really drew me in just to to do something so different from what we had done before, but just as ambitious in a different way. And and the script itself, when when Greg sent it to me, I was I could just. Uh, really relate with what it was and, and what was happening at the time and everything. And uh, it was just, for me, it was such a, a relatable script to just kind of dive into. Yeah, absolutely. And what a creepy building that is, by the way. <laughs> I've driven past that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that oh, the one from Kingdom Come? Yeah. Yeah, you had to have some, some real. Yeah, uh, it's. Yeah, <laughs> to even step foot in there. <laughs> that's, that's one of the, yeah, one of the creepiest places I've ever, I've ever been in and yeah the fact that it was shut down for a long time and there was spray painting and, and letters written on walls and stuff like that it was yes it was pretty cool yeah that's cool awesome and then with steve like oh my gosh it's like what were all the neighbors thinking it's very like cia like right for him <laughs> me and the man that's actually pretty cool <laughs> yeah awesome yeah what is it would have people probably thought he was like listening in on some mobsters or something like that right right <laughs> So awesome. So let's talk a little bit about your character, Jason. Um, so we're going to see obviously some clips and get a real kind of flavor for what 
Jason might be like. Um, but how would you describe Jason? I know you gave us a little bit of a taste at the beginning, but like overall with his character, how does he play into the mix here? Uh, so Jason is, um, he's a very, he's, he's almost a bit of a recluse. He's very focused on his work. He's a writer. Uh, he takes it very seriously and loves like kind of just diving full tilt into his work. Um, and so, yeah, just as a, as a character who doesn't really, you know, he's self-sufficient. He, he kind of does his own thing. He doesn't, he interacts with his agent and everything over the phone and stuff. So he doesn't deal with a lot of people. So he's kind of a little bit awkward in dealing with actual person-to-person, uh, -person, face to face conversations and stuff. So it was fun to uh, to kind of build on both those aspects of him him kind of being on his well being on his own and and really focusing on this this job this work that he's trying to create. And then when he does have the interactions later on with with uh, Joanna's character, it's it becomes incredibly awkward for him trying to just just interact with her and trying not to sound or seem like a creep really. <laughs> yeah yeah amazing and so I've seen the famous uh what I think might be a famous mug with your skull on it uh because that's made an appearance on social a couple times so um that might play into some of my my this next part of the question which is you know when you think about that and you know kind of introverted a little bit different right maybe a little bit shy like how do you best prepare for a role like that to to sort of play that out <laughs> um <laughs> Well, for this one, it was uh, it was a little different and a little easier because I was at that at that time I was by myself. My my partner had gone home to spend some time with her family during lockdown, so I was by myself uh, in in the house for I think a good two months or at least a full month at that point. So so when I got the script and then working on it leading into it, I was completely on my own and uh, being a writer myself too. I, I just kind of know what it's like when you need to just focus on something and just kind of get down and just start just working on it. You, you just need to separate yourself from kind of everything else. So, so knowing that aspect and um, living it at the time, living it like directly at the time, uh, it was pretty easy to kind of come into things like in that, in that mind frame right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So some truth to this character a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah, there's a few, a few things in there that are pretty, uh, yeah, they're pretty personal. And, and I know that um, Greg like injected a bunch of things that he knows that like, like he wrote the script and, and he, he knows what it's like to, to sit there and try and punch out a script. And it was, it was kind of probably, I bet it was a really meta experience for him having just wrote this script and then jumping into directing it. Like he wrote it, I, I don't know, two, three weeks, four weeks tops before we actually started shooting it, I think around about that. So he wrote it and then we were, he was diving into pre-production, sent me the script and then he did a couple of revisions. And then next thing you know, we were in his apartment shooting it. So, yeah. So yeah, there are some definite meta meta levels to, to the shoot. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. So there's some truth veins in there. There's some quickness and reality. I think we were all feeling the uh, the lockdown <laughs> at that time, at that point of the year, some craziness. So uh, certainly that mm. helped <laughs> with that. Um, so this character, um, you know, you've had a number of other films that you've been in. Um, you know, how is this different, you know, for you compared to some of the other, you know, feature films and things that you you've been a part of? Um, well, they, like just right off the bat, just the whole experience of kind of shooting it um, in a lockdown was that added some differences right off the bat, just to, with everybody um, quarantining ahead, ahead of time and then all the, the safety kind of precautions and stuff we did um, going into the actual shoot. Um, and then the, they're only being really two actors who are in the majority of, of the scenes throughout the whole thing. We, we kind of bubbled, me and Joanna were bubbled ourselves because we were the only people who literally interacted on screen really for the most part. Um, and then Greg, Gary, and Mike were behind the scenes with masks on and doing their best. They were, they were still distancing. Like when we had our, our lunch breaks and stuff like that, everyone kind of spaced out and me and Joanna, we could be within the same area, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was like one major thing right off the bat, figuring out all those little details and being safe and smart about it. And when we did do the outdoor scenes, you kind of had to, we, it was, it was gorilla. We were just running in there and, and 
kind of grabbing what we needed to get in the middle of um, this lockdown. And there being very, very, I mean, this is early lockdown last year too. So there was very few people out on the streets at that time. And just it, it uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a different situation for that. And then, and then for the creative aspects, um, it was, yeah, it was very, this is the, I mean, I've done films where I've had a lot of uh, solo scenes as well, but not nothing to this extent. Uh, being being alone, sitting in front of a, a computer and in your apartment and kind of in your own space. It's an exercise to try and keep things fresh and exciting mm -hmm. because it, you can like with each thing and, and as it sort of amps up and as, as the character becomes a little more paranoid and is wondering what's going on, you kind of, you want to introduce new elements and new uh, character traits to, to show that you know, it's, it's not just, it's not just him. There are other things happening and, and the elevation of that uh, to keep it interesting and to keep it fresh. That, that was something, that was a new challenge for sure for the, for the, uh, the, the chunks of the film where I'm completely by myself before uh, other characters enter into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so many things to think about. Not only did you have a small, you know, sort of crew on set, um, you know, there's only a few characters uh, as well. Um, and just, yeah, I mean, I remember that time, if I put myself back to that time, and just, it was almost eerie, like being around, like nobody was out and about. <laughs> so it would have just lended it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, at the beginning of the, lot, every, everything was a little more different. I think everyone took like the majority of everyone was taking everything a lot more seriously at that at that point in time and everything I think and um yeah it was yeah it was just a different it was a different situation than what it seems like now yeah absolutely absolutely so so uh we've got Joanna uh so Lisa who is your co-star in the film um so what can you tell us about you know Lisa and uh I know you've talked about how you kind of tried to a little awkward conversation things like <laughs> that but uh what can you share with us about the two characters um yeah so Lisa is Jason's neighbor who shows up um in kind of towards the end of the third act or the sorry the first act um and it's sort of um it's it's hard not giving things away here but so so when we we first meet she comes to just get coffee basically and, and i'm uh my character's dealing with all these crazy things that are slowly amping up and he's getting more and more frustrated and confused and paranoid and then he comes right into this introduction to her character and it's just he doesn't know he doesn't know what's what's what he's um but when he meets her, there's an there's sort of an instant attraction between them, and that's where yeah his awkwardness entirely kind of starts to be able to be seen. What what how he interacts with other people, especially when he's trying to, um, I guess just be normal <laughs> and, or try to impress somebody. Um, so yeah, that that was um, that was a major part that comes into play, and then as the characters get to know each other, it kind of um, it kind of turns, and there's a bit of. Um, I don't know, it's not not necessarily a cat and mouse game, but there's back and forth of of um, information and just uh, what exactly they are becoming or what the relationship is. Mm -hmm. So it was fun to play with that and to sort of uh, experiment. We, we the, the great thing was that for those for all of uh, uh, Joanna's coverage, there, it, there's just the, the two of us. So we could we had lots of time to work on the scenes and then to um experiment with different ideas greg would throw an idea and we try something or we would suggest something at the end of a scene and we kind of switch things around or do whatever which you don't always get to do with uh a bigger cast uh or, or with with um more locations that you have to quickly jump to or something like that you, we really had a lot of time to kind of work on those scenes and, and play around with them and make sure they felt right mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. So more flexibility, right? And your creative mm -hmm. muscles, you can flex those a little bit more, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. So you mentioned locations. Uh, so that kind of lends itself to my next question for you. Uh, those that are local to Ontario, some may recognize uh, where some of the scenes are shot, uh, especially, you know, at certain parts of the movie. But are you able to share with our audience where this uh, movie was filmed? Uh, yeah, so we shot in London, Ontario. Um, most of it is in uh, Greg's actual apartment, um, mm -hmm. and, and and then with a bunch of scenes, the hallways and everything, uh, that's all in his apartment building. So we were all 
all the interiors are pretty much all in just the, the one uh, spot. Mm -hmm. So while we were shooting, yeah, like um, Greg was living <laughs> in his own sets. Uh, there was lighting setups and stuff that were left overnight and, and production design. And, you know, we, he was living in the middle of this entire movie. And, and while he was doing that, too, he was um, feeding us, too. He basically um, catered the whole thing for the most part, like he'd be cooking and um, prepping stuff ahead of time while we we're going over our lines over here. He's like throwing some chicken in the oven and stuff. So he was right in the middle of everything. And I don't know how he, cause the, the, the apartment goes through some transformations too. So it, it um, he must not have been all that comfortable for the, the month that we were, <laughs> were there. Cause it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty chaotic. And there was a lot of, we had quite a, quite a bit of equipment and, um, like jibs and stands and lights all over the place and tracks and dollies and all that. So him and him and Boosh, uh, his cat, they, uh, they made it work somehow. So yeah. <laughs> Talk about an immersive experience, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One with your film. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think I, I doubt he'll be able to, to top that because yeah. unless he's, unless he's shooting a movie about himself in it while he's writing it or something. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, that's awesome. And Greg does have a little bit of a chef's background that I'm not sure he shares with most people. So hopefully the chicken. Was uh, <laughs> it was good. It was, yeah. he did jerk chicken. He had some like, uh, he did like bacon, chicken carbonara one day. He oh, did, yeah. oh, there was, a, it was all good. Yeah, it was yeah. all uh, really good. Awesome. I'm reflecting <laughs> all their talents. <laughs> nice. All right, so we've got more folks that have been popping on the line here. So welcome if you're just joining us here. Um, we still have the movie trailer and an exclusive clip coming up to share. So what do you think, Ryan? Should we show the movie trailer and kind of give people a flavor for what you've been sharing here? Yeah, let's see yeah. it. All right, let's do it. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen here, folks. Just give me a sec to pull this up. I am very excited to see this. Awesome, and here we go. What do you do? I'm a writer, a uh, screenwriter, actually. Ah, like movies. Yeah, like, like movies. Where we uh, haven't run into each other yet. Yeah, I've seen you around. Really? Yeah, but in your defense, you sort of seem to be in your own world sometimes. Hey there, little guy. Tell me something about yourself. I think you probably know more than you think. What's that supposed to mean? Why am I here, Jason? We need to talk about this. Talk about what? The truth. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not some crazy nutcase, okay? This isn't what you think it is. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I guess you're not ready for this. There you go. You're starting to see it. you really get a flavor for some of that and even just you know the darkness <laughs> in the background yes yeah, it's, so. it's got some uh, it's got some darkness to it <laughs> yes. Yes. amazing awesome oh cool so we've got some more folks jumping on hopefully they got a chance to to check that out there's more to come because we do have an exclusive clip coming up uh so i'm really excited for that um yeah that really seems to keep you wondering <laughs> <laughs> That's a great trailer. Um, all right. So a couple of times Boosh Boosh has come up and we all know that in addition to working uh, with Joanna, your other co-star was Boosh Boosh the cat who also has an Instagram page now. So um, <laughs> I'd be remiss not to ask you what it was like working with a cat. 
Yeah, Boosh is she's a star. She's a star. Like she's just, <laughs> you know, just a born star. <laughs> she is actually she's such a she was kind of like the uh whenever whenever you're on a shoot where there's a pet, it's always just a bonus because it's like whenever you have ch- time to chill or whatever, they're right there ready to get pet. And Boosh was was exactly that. She was always just hanging out whenever the scenes were going. There was a couple times where she walked in and tried to kind of steal the the show. But um she was, yeah, she's she's really cute and she did not want to do the things that that we needed her to do so greg greg enticed her with treats and eventually she would do that thing and it would be perfect but it took a little while to get her to kind of but though yeah the hallway the the scenes of her in the hallway where she's walking and she just kind of sits right in the middle of the hallway it was just kind of it was perfect she she looks a little bit like the cat from um the new pet yeah new pet cemetery film (laughs) So she kind of like she fit the whole kind of Stephen King uh, vibe a little bit there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I was impressed. Like just to see her sitting there, I'm like, I'm a cat owner myself. I think I heard some meowing on your end a little <laughs> bit earlier. So I was like, often to try to get them to do anything is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I actually yeah I was gonna have to go because my cat. Whenever I do anything on video or live, I go into <laughs> the room, set everything up, and then she starts trying to get into the door. So if you hear meowing on my end, that's just her trying to come in to sabotage anything that I'm doing. Yeah, treats are <laughs> always the answer and always the distraction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. So, I mean, I know this was Joanna's first feature film as well, because she talked about that a little bit last week when we did her interview. So, you know, she was saying there was so much opportunity to learn from everyone. What was it like for you? You've got so much experience um, being able to work with someone that was so new to feature film. Um. For being your first uh, feature, she she's pretty well versed and, and knew what she was doing. Like um, it didn't seem like didn't seem like it was her first gig. Um, and and she has she had done other like short films and, and produced some short films and all that kind of stuff. So she definitely is well versed in what she's doing in general. So it didn't seem I, it it's always a different thing with a new cast or new uh, uh, people that you're working with in general, you kind of figure out how each other works and and how you kind of can uh, create the scene and make it the best thing that it can be. And for, for this situation, it was great to just have people who are willing to, to were patient, willing to creatively think about different ideas and to, and we also, yeah, like Greg, um, I think Greg knows too, that Joanna was literally our, like our second um, like continuity person there. Like when we, when, even even in her scenes and even scenes where she was doing where she was uh, she she helped out holding the boom and stuff sometimes too whenever whenever she wasn't in the scene, but um yeah it was just great to have somebody who is you know watching for those things and cares about the film on that level too because sometimes people will walk in and and they're there just to play the role just to uh, just to do the part and and they don't necessarily care as much about the actual final product of the film so it's great when you have people who are there who care as much as you do about what the final product is the whole the whole big picture sort of thing and not just what they're doing yeah absolutely and i think like even just lending itself to that smaller casting crew like you know have the opportunity to care about it more but also like you know get your hands dirty a little bit in certain things learn something new which is pretty cool so awesome um yeah absolutely yeah, yeah absolutely um so you know, what advice would you have? I've seen um, some of your, your little tidbits of some of the other interviews you've been doing. Um, I'm curious what advice you would have for people when they're watching this movie for the first time. Uh, I, I, it's definitely like a film for, um, for, for like turning the lights off and cranking the sound up 100%. It's, um, it's, a, it's a slow burn. So it, you know, it introduces you to the character, the whole setup and everything. And then you start to see uh, what what is wrong, and slowly, there are hints and cues as to what's going on, but there are also hints and cues as to it might be this or that or whatever. Which I think it equally points people in different directions. So my advice would be, yeah, just turn up the turn up the sound, turn down the lights, get some popcorn ready, and then just uh, like invest invest in the characters. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. I've heard that. I've heard the slow burn term. So I think that's great. Uh, good things are worth waiting for. Right. So, 
I think <laughs> you're hanging in on that. Um, I also believe that you may have had a little bit of short notice. I think Joanna talked about this last week when she was saying that there wasn't a ton of time actually for you to do some of your prep work, but you just like rolled right into it. So I would love if there's anything you could share about your experience there with the audience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the whole production, like like I was mentioning too, like Greg wrote it quickly um, and then and then worked on that and and sent it over to me. I think jo Joanna had even less time because I had been sent the script already mm. and Greg was finalizing who he was casting. Um, but it's still, yeah, it was still a quick turnover. I think from lockdown, which was uh, towards the end of March mm -hmm. and then I think mid April, maybe it was around when I got the script. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, I forget exactly when we were shooting, but it was, it was early May, I, I think, earlier mid-May. So yeah, there was about a month about a month of uh, turnover, which is not a ton of time, but it's um, when you're when you know kind of exactly what you're doing and you know that it's mostly in one location and uh, you, you just kind of start focusing on specifics of what the character is. And, and well, the other thing was too, that we actually shot chronologically backwards. We shot the ending of the film first, and then we went back and shot all the scenes with, with myself and Joanna. And then we went back and shot kind of the beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, um, it was interesting to do it that way. And it worked in a really cool way that we could prep for the ending first. And then we kind of let that, uh, that grew as we were shooting it as well. And then for everything we shot after that, we could tailor it exactly to how we kind of ended up and where we ended up. And we also had the option to be like, Oh, if we need to tweak something, we can go and tweak that for the, the final shoots and stuff too. But it was, yeah, it was, um, it was a quick turnover and, uh, but it was, there's a, a reason for that too. We, had, we, we wanted to shoot while the lockdown was still happening and um, we jumped into it and yeah, and, and got it, got the scenes that we specifically needed done kind of just in time. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. So such a cool experience. I mean, looking back on this, like, I mean, none of us thought we were going to be in this situation <laughs> like a year ago, over a year ago now, which is crazy. Um, but, you know, kind of looking back on how things unfolded, like sometimes it's all in the opportunity and things kind of take their own shape and, you know, work out really well. Um, small crew, you know, more involvement, some creative opportunities and things like that. You know, I'm curious if this has changed your view, you know, about projects and things that you might be involved in in the future like going forward well it's you know it's always with every project it's always, it's always different and I think um different different crew sizes and different I mean it all depends on what kind of film you're making and what you're going for and um you know what the budget budgetary restrictions are and what you what you can work with and what you're you know what you're aiming for sort of thing so it's yeah with it with a tiny cast crew like this it it's um definitely lends its way to to be more creative and in the moment to be able to to change things because you're not one department isn't tied to another department everyone's just there it's a core specific group of people and and you can sit there and shoot things back and like everyone is like the whole cast crew was sitting there kind of bouncing ideas back and forth and be like oh well yeah no that doesn't work and then greg be like oh yeah but then we go like this and we got that's got to be this for this so it's great to literally just be there and fully creative immersed in it. Mm -hmm. um, where, whereas like bigger projects and bigger um, cast and stuff, um, you have a, maybe a little less than that, depending on if they're focusing on one big scene, maybe you can, you know, have a little more creative um, freedom in, in the specific scenes and stuff like that. But everything is generally more tied together that you can't stray too far. Yeah. Um, and we didn't and we didn't stray that far either from the script that from the story really it was just um kind of additions and little things that we that we added to uh to to kind of tie things all together there but yeah it's um it's it, i find it's a pro project by project um everything's different and everything's aiming for a different goal and a different tone and style and message and it just kind of depends on what I guess just the group of people that you have together. I mean, sort of more focused than others. And that's just, I guess that's just how it, how it is, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>
Absolutely. And I think there's one thing that you're kind of been hitting on throughout this whole thing. And it's something that I've been saying to everyone in this last year, like I'm just blown away by like the innovation. So, you know, an mm. innovation shows up in so many different ways, big ways, small ways, but like just the genius and the the creativity that's come out of like being put in such a weird situation, the, the ideas that people come up with, the workarounds, like all those things, it's just genius. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's yeah. true. And, and uh, yeah, like this, this project would not have happened if it wasn't for the lockdown. So it's, yeah. it's just one thing that came out of one creative outlet that, that came out of us being yeah. the creative types being trapped in a house and, and not being able to do anything else. You're like, let's make a movie. Totally. Totally. We're going to be forever changed by this. I don't even think we know yet. <laughs> Things yeah. that will come out that are cool. So awesome. All right. So I've been alluding to this exclusive clip all night. <laughs> I think it might be high time for us to share. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, let's see. I, I, uh, Greg mentioned what it was, but I actually forget what it was, oh. which scene it is right now. So all right. I'm interested. Okay, cool. So I am going to share my screen again with folks and we are going to put this baby here. All right. One sec. Here we go. So that's one of those moments where you're like, don't touch it. <laughs> don't touch it. And what is it? And is something going to come out? It's like, <laughs> what are the possibilities? <laughs> uh, anything you want to share about that? Yeah. You can. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, uh, I, I immediately remembered what, what Greg mess mentioned earlier that it was that scene. So that's, um, so like I mentioned, the, the apartment kind of starts to go through some physical changes and that's one of them as he's writing his script there's this crack that starts in the wall uh behind him and, and you slowly see it it starts to uh over time it gets bigger and bigger and eventually subsequently becomes this this hole in the wall uh and it's emitting this nasty smell and mm -hmm. he's just first he thinks it's from the neighbors and then he's not sure and he you know he's so this is where he it, it's gotten a lot worse in a short amount of time. And so he walks up to it and, and inspects it and yeah, finds out that it's really nasty, even nastier than he thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome and gross. <laughs> I can't wait <laughs> to figure out what that is. Awesome. So, um, you know, the other thing I was thinking, so we were talking about, um, you know, a number of the films and different projects, music videos, all kinds of things that you've been involved in. So it sounds like you've certainly got like a breadth of experience in different areas. Um, you know, for you, given that this was a smaller film and there was more opportunity to be creative and things like that, uh, is there anything you think like, you know, just really served you from past experiences or just different things that you've encountered or been involved in that really helped, you know, kind of lend itself to this film? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, just, uh, yeah, like just, um, a little bit of everything, like everything you've done in the past, you kind of, well, at least, at least myself, I try to, I try to learn or take away something off of every shoot and I always watch people and, you know, see what they're doing and try and learn from somebody else or even, and, and it's doesn't, it doesn't even matter if they're super experienced. Sometimes you can learn something from somebody who doesn't, who just jumped on to, to something. Right. So just every little bit of um, that, that I've kind of stored over the years and uh, the, the differences of working on I've, I've done some really small projects and I've done some, some bigger projects, nothing like, 
uh, Avengers level or anything like that. But I mean, I've, I've done some, some bigger shoots and some smaller ones. And so it's, it's, uh, it's nice to have been able to do that. And, you know, so you can, you know what to look for and you know what to expect and, and to be patient when you need to be and to, uh, to speak up and to, to help out in other ways when, when you, when you can see it's needed. So just all those, those little things, I think. And, and I think it's, it was, it was a great team because I know Gary and Greg and Mike are, are like that too. And meeting Joanna, she's also like that too. So it was, it was literally just a team of everybody who's kind of there to like for the best possible product and is willing to help out in any kind of way to, to make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So June one is coming up really quickly. Uh, <laughs> anything that people should be expecting uh, coming up as part of the film? Anything you want to share? Uh, June, June 1st for the, for the film. Um, just, well, actually, well, the, the, the pre-release, right. If, if you can order that ahead of time, you get the, the extras involved, the commentaries and, and, uh, this, the, I'm actually, you know what? I actually did see the blooper reel. I was just thinking about that. So they're going to get to see whoever pre-orders gets to see the blooper reel. And it's, it's pretty funny. Cause there was a lot of, uh, when there's just five people on set you get a little exhausted after time and um when when your director your cinematographer and your guy who's doing like everything in between gripping gaffing and and then so were gary and greg as well but yeah everyone gets pretty exhausted at a point and you get to those moments where the, the guinea moments where you can't finish a scene because everyone's cracking up or laughing or something's just blatantly in the shot that should not be there and you're, yeah you know, you got to go back and do it all over again. So I think the blooper reel is probably, is pretty good. I, I saw a cut, an early cut of, of that. Um, and it was pretty funny. Um, so that I, I'm hoping I get, I want to get that. I hope it's on the, uh, the Blu-ray because there's, they're having a physical media release too, of uh, Blu-ray and DVD. So I, I'm definitely going to pick up a Blu-ray and I hope that the extras are on there too, but I'm not sure. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, you got Boosh the Cat, you got Greg cooking chicken dinner, so you got a pandemic going on. I don't think it's got to be good. <laughs> That's right, guys. So yeah, for those that are jumping dogs, we've had sort of people coming on um, as we've been going along here. Uh, if you're just getting caught up, um, that's right. So you will get uh, the commentary and the gag reel as part of the pre-order. Uh, so more information to come on that in the coming days, uh, but there will be a pre-order available before June 1st. So you'll be able to score that uh, if you're somebody that takes advantage of that. So make sure you do, make sure you do. Um, awesome. So Ryan, I feel like we've covered so much ground tonight. Uh, I'm really excited to have an opportunity to watch this film. Um, you know, before we head out and kind of wrap things up here, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audience here? Anything that you, you'd like to touch on or just kind of leave them with? Uh, well, you mentioned a bunch of stuff at the beginning too, but yeah, I just want to mention uh, Still the Water. Um, yeah, hi, Still the Water fa uh, friends, if anyone's watching there. Um, we're, we, um, we just released uh, last April 27th. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's been streaming, it's on iTunes and um, TELUS, Rogers, Bell On Demand. Um, in the States, it's on Amazon and Tubi. So anywhere you can find it, leave their, write a review on Amazon or Tubi if you can for us. Awesome. Uh, we love hearing back from people. It's, it's the same, you know, it's the same with anything. We wanna hear back about open your eyes when it's released and you know, you love hearing people's interpretations and stuff like that, so. Yeah, still the water is out there, um, yeah, which we shot on Prince Edward Island. It's it's a, a family drama. It's got some dark stuff in there, so it's not necessarily for kids or anything. But it is, uh, yeah, it's fully shot on Prince Edward Island and uh, totally a Canadian uh, produced film. Cool. And I have another uh, another. It's a, well, it's a horror comedy that will be coming out eventually that I finished wrapping on a couple months ago called Chamber of Terror. Wow. So that'll be yeah. We're hoping I'm. Well, I'm, I'm, I personally hope, I think everyone's hoping that festivals are happening again this fall and hopefully it'll be screening at one of those. Yeah. And I just started a podcast because everyone on the planet has a podcast. <laughs> so we decided to have one too. So me and my, my friend, uh, I used to bartend with, we're, we're both fans of craft beer and movies. Nice. So we came up with this podcast that is basically we sample craft beers and talk about movies and we kind of come up with this topic and have uh, movie battles. So yeah. that, that is just, we just started. We only have two episodes. It's called uh, 
Bruise Bros and Videos. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, two episodes posted on Spotify and everywhere else. So those are the things I got right now. Uh, and then working on a few other cool projects that I think will be uh, happening soon too. Amazing. I love it. Craft beer, popcorn movies, count me in. <laughs> All <laughs> the above. That's um... <laughs> It's a and it's a very light podcast. We're joking the whole time. It's not that I mean sometimes the topic of the movie might get a little heavy, but we try to keep it light the whole time and jokey and stuff. So it's definitely a background. Throw it on the background and while you're cooking or something like that. <laughs> awesome. We're all in need of a little bit of entertainment these days. So I'm all for it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So we've got your podcast here. Um, you know, Ryan, if people want to follow along with you, it sounds like I mean you've you've done some incredible work. Um, more to come June 1st. You've got some more things coming out. If people really want to kind of catch up with you, follow along with you, where can they find you? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you want to drive people. Yeah, you can pretty much find me most just uh, if you search Rye Barrett or at Rye Barrett uh, or Instagram, I'm at the Rye Barrett because there was another Rye Barrett already who stole it. Uh, I'm on TikTok. I don't do a lot on there, but I'm still figuring that I'm trying to promote stuff and it's, you know, it's TikTok. It is what it is. So other than that, yeah, I'm on Facebook. I have an actor's page, uh, Instagram. Those are the two things I'm on the most often. Awesome. All right. I love it. You are the Ryan Barrett, not just Ryan Barrett. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> Good on you. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. It has been such a pleasure. And I just want to say thank you to our amazing audience that's tuned in. Uh, you know, you guys make these sessions so wonderful. Love the comments, the feedback, everything going on in the chat. Um, but before you head out for the rest of your evening, there's just a couple reminders uh, as people have been kind of joining us uh, as we go along. So again, make sure you keep an eye out, open your eyes, coming June 1, T minus 13 and a half days, we'll call it right now, 13 days tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be on video on demand, DVD, Blu-ray, uh, and uh, this film being uh, distributed by Gravitas Ventures in North America. So you have an opportunity to get your pre-orders in quotes. You will not want to miss out on this. Uh, I'm really excited after seeing that trailer and exclusive clip and wanting to know what the stink is. <laughs> Um, but also remember uh, that you're going to be able to pre-order this as well. So if you do pre-order, you're going to get uh, the director and Ryan Bear audio commentary and the gag reel sent to you. And it sounds like we don't want to miss out on that. So with that, thank you so much, Ryan. It's been such a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Sarah. It was, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, amazing. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll see you soon. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.